Hey everyone, it's the Awesome Dan here, and welcome back to more Dan Reacts. Today I actually want to t talk to you guys about the new Netflix series called Luke Cage. If you guys didn't know, Luke Cage is actually based in the whole MCU universe, so expect a lot of easter eggs and spoilers, like the movies and all that. So, basically, what I found really interesting about this show is that Luke Cage, I think it was Luke Cage, Falcon, and Black Panther, like, the first three mainstream African-American superheroes. I think that was, like, very revolutionary in the comics. I think they explored that and they portrayed that very well in the show. So, if you guys didn't know, there's going to be a few spoilers in this. So, if you haven't watched Luke Cage yet, or if you haven't watched all 12 episodes... Of, ne of Luke Cage on Netflix yet, please go do that now. In fact, no, no, pause the video, go watch it, go to Netflix, go watch it, and then come back. No way, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. Okay, so still waiting, still waiting, and boom, yeah, episode finished, credits roll, okay. So, it starts off, if you, um, Luke Cage actually got his, like, debut in Jessica Jones, uh, which is, like, another Netflix series made by Marvel. He actually made his debut in Jessica Jones, but now he has a actually standalone show, which doesn't take place before Jessica Jones, it takes place after Jessica Jones. So all that shit happened with the Purple Man, all that bizarreness happened, and Luke Cage is starting a new life, you know, after all that happened. He's still, I don't think he, he's still sort of wanted by the police, but not really. I mean, he's, like, he's wanted for escaping jail, but he's not wanted for, you know, being the shit out of two cops in that one episode of Jessica Jones. But he's starting a new life in Harlem, which is a, which is actually an actual place that I've actually always wanted to go to. Like, I've lived in New York for, like, all my life. I've never been to Harlem, even though I really want to. But it's like, how do I get there? <laughs> it's like, how do I get to Harlem? Like, it's, like, I know, like, it, I know, like, Harlem. I, like, I know, like, the general area, but I don't know how to get there. <laughs> that's very, like, that's very concerning for me. I live here all my life. I've never been to, like, one of the most famous places in New York. So, he's, he's li starting a new life in Harlem. He's basically being the uh, uh, the the brusher boy in a barbershop called Pops, I think, where basically he gets like you know he makes new friends, makes new connections, and all that. You know, he's starting a life. He doesn't want like the superhero life. He doesn't want like all that attention. He just wants to be left alone. He just wants to do his own thing, mind his own business. He just want to be left alone. And what I really like is that that whole mindset, because not everybody that wants to be a hero wants to be like, oh, wants to be like kind of like the Tony Stark kind of like personality, like, oh yeah, I'm a hero, I'm Tony Stark, I'm Iron Man. Ah, some heroes like, you know, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, they just want to be left alone. Like, yeah, I got powers, yeah, I'm bulletproof, yeah, I can do this, but I just want to be left alone. And I really like how, I don't know the actor's name, but I like that wh whoever played Luke Cage, I like his like his like his, like he really portrayed Luke Cage really well, but the one downside of the whole series I didn't like was the villain choice. I mean, there were a few villains in there. It was like the first like five episodes, it was Cotton Mouth. Then after you know Cotton Mouth like Queen or like you know her his not only second but like her his cousin kills him. Then it's a new villain, Diamondback, who's behind the everything, and it was just so like wait what? I mean the Cottonmouth villain. I I didn't really like his. I, I really didn't like him as a villain. Like I was I really wasn't feeling like all that terrified. Honestly, he just seemed like a normal gangster. That's like like compared to like Wilson Fisk. He's, like, nothing, like, the per the person who played Wilson Fisk in Daredevil, like, yeah, he was, like, a gangster, but, like, he was so much more than that, like, he brought the whole gangster mob boss role to life, and that's what, like, I really want to see Cottonmouth do, but it just, he felt short, sh ugh, it just felt so short and so bland, like, there was nothing to his character that made me actually care for Cottonmouth, that made me want, like, you know, feel shocked, like, wonder what Cottonmouth is gonna do next, like, I, I just felt like, uh boring, like, he felt like a pushover, Cottonmouth felt like a pushover, now, Diamondback, Diamondback was actually more of a compelling villain, because he was Luke Cage's brother, which I didn't know Luke Cage had a brother, he was Luke Cage's brother, and he kind of had that, I'm psycho crazy, and I want revenge mindset, and he had that mindset where he was planning on doing anything and everything to get that revenge, to make Luke Cage suffer. And that is what I like in a villain, where it's not just, oh, I'm evil for the sake of evil. It's like, I'm evil, but this is why I'm evil. This is the reason why I'm evil. This is why I'm hunting this person. It's like, 
I, I really hate villains that are like, oh, I'm evil, and I'm gonna hunt the main, I'm gonna hunt the hero because I'm an evil person. No, I, hero, villains are like, yeah, I'm evil, but I have a reason to be evil. This is my purpose to be evil. This is why I'm evil. And it's kind of hard for you to, like, disagree, and kind of hard for you to hate the reason why he's evil. It's, that one makes a really good villain to me. Like, if you think about all the great villains in, like, comic book history, most of them aren't like, oh, I'm evil for the sake of evil. It's more like I'm evil, and this is why I'm evil. I'm hunting you because this is why I'm hunting you. That would make a really compelling villain. But I actually looked up who Diamondback was, and turns out he's actually very different in the comics. I just typed in Marvel Comics Diamondback. Turns out Diamondback is actually a girl. And I don't know much about, you know, the powers of Diamond, the female Diamondback, but... I was like, I'm, like, I'm actually kind of curious, like, I know Marvel, like, they don't make, mis they don't, like, make that many mistakes, and they're very, very good at hinting and foreshadowing a bunch of things, so, making a male character called Diamondback, even though they have their own female character named Diamondback, something's up, like, like, something's gonna happen in the MCU where there's gonna be a female Diamondback, or something's gonna happen with him and Diamondback, but the whole outfit that he wore... It very, like, it very much made me think of the Constructor. I think that's his name. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll look up. I'm not sure that's the name. But I think the, there's another Marvel villain called the Constructor or something like that. Where he had the very, like, similar kind of outfit. And that is, like, what I was kind of, like, thinking that maybe that's what, you know, the diamond back in the show was trying to be. But a villain named the Constructor kind of, like... Uh, maybe, like, you know, had, like, maybe his, like, suit or something like that. Maybe, like, it's spelled out Constructor, like, an acronym that said Constructor on it. Maybe that would be kind of cool, but, like, Diamondback? Um, I'm not really sure. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, it's a cool name, but, like, it's same the same name as another MCU character. And that's going to be kind of confusing. If, you read, if you're a very heavy um, comic book reader like I am, it's it can be very confusing. Now, the Easter eggs in Luke Cage... That is actually, I I mean, I only saw three or four? Because I know that they called him Power Man a lot in the show. And if you didn't know, Power Man was actually Luke Cage's original hero name. They used to call him Power Man. And that was like a great nod to like the original comics. And during his like whole prison escape, when like he escapes in prison and he's like on land and he's finding clothes, the clothes that he wears are very, very similar to his original costume outfit that he wears in the comics. Which is really really great nod. But that that being said, they had so much poten potential to include more Easter eggs and include more, you know, connections to the other Netflix shows. I mean, yeah, they mentioned Frank Castle, like, when, like, um, when they're, like, having that hostage negotiation, and the, um, I forget, the, the, the guy, the, basically, basically the black guy from the, from, from season two of Daredevil, who was basically, um, the DA's, you know, right-hand man, him, he showed up, it was like, oh, like, why, like, are you bringing all these big guns, Luke Cage, he said, like, no, um, Frank Castle did all this destruction with normal guns, imagine somebody like him with these power-enhanced guns. And I, you kind of agree with him. I mean, Punisher is one like one Marvel character you do not fuck with. And if he can do all that destruction with normal guns and normal bullets, imagine somebody like him, or even crazier, or even worse than Frank Castle, getting their hands on like these super enhanced mega guns that can drill through you know a bulletproof arm, a bulletproof guy, and explode from one of them. Imagine that. And the, another one was Jessica Jones. Where I think she was giving like a rally or something like that within the club. I think it's they're both in the same episode. They're getting a rally, and she said a girl who is mind controlled into snapping a guy's neck. That was actually reference to the last episode of Jessica Jones, where you know she's in questioning all that, and her lawyer Hogarth was like, um, Kilgrave mind controlled her, quote unquote mind controlled her into snapping his neck because of the guilt and all that, which we all know is not really true, but. Just imagine, like, one suit, like, they could have included Daredevil a lot more. Because I know that, um, they, like, you know, the nurse referenced that, oh, yeah, she knows a good lawyer. Like, she kept refer she kept saying that, oh, yeah, she she has, like, she knows a good lawyer. We all know she's re referring to freaking Matt Murdock. We all know. But, like, there was this one scene where I saw where they could have included a cameo of Daredevil. They could have included Daredevil to be in the show. And that would made, like, a great fit. Because remember when Luke Cage was running... 
from the co- like the second time where like you know he escaped from the from the bus from like the the co- convoy and he's running and the cops are chasing him and the one cop stopped him and was like oh I'm gonna let you go and stuff like that they could include Daredevil in that instead of the cop stopping him it could have been Daredevil was like you know you're wanted con you're wanted convict I'm, I'm gonna take you in come yourself uh, like you know come quietly. And, you know, maybe they could have fought or something. Luke Cage is like, you have to believe me, I'm innocent. And since Daredevil has, like, heightened hearing and he can tell if you're lying or not, he could be like, oh, yeah, I believe you, you're innocent, I'll let you go. And that could, you know, make a sort of connection to Daredevil and Luke Cage, which could be expanded upon more in the Defender show. I, w- I really wish that would happen, because we would have seen a lot more of of um, Daredevil, and we could have even gotten a little hint of what's to come in Daredevil Season 3, because we all know Season 3 is confirmed. It's like, it's confirmed, it's coming out next, I think, mid next year? Mid or beginning of next year, I'm not sure, but I want to say mid next year of 2017, and it's very, very heavily implied, it's not really heavily implied, but there's like a lot of rumors that it's going to follow the Born Again storyline, where Wilson Fisk escapes from prison, and he makes good on his promise to Matt Murdock, where he's going to destroy both Daredevil and Matt Murdock. And that's what he promised to do in Season 2 of Daredevil, and that's what's leaning toward, that's what's hinting toward, and I really want to see that, because if they do that, so many possibilities can be opened up. Because the Born Again comics, they were marvelous, they were like one of the best comics I ever read. It actually showed you what would happen if you put a hero, if you like, you make a hero past the breaking point. For a hero who doesn't who doesn't kill, who like you know, who's all goody two shoes, who doesn't kill, who stops evil and all that, and the goody two shoes hero, what would happen if you push him to his breaking point? That if you push him to the next level, you constantly push him, and you make him break that line and step over the line, and it really shows you what happens when you mess with the wrong, <laughs> when you mess with a hero both mentally and physically. But yeah, I'm getting a little off topic. <laughs> See, I'm a I'm a huge nerd. I actually love like talking about this guys, and I'll keep you. Like, I'll like tell you more. Like, if you guys want to know more, like my thoughts on the MCU and my thoughts on Netflix series, just let me know. Just, just leave a comment section. I'd love to talk more about MCU. But my overall like thought of the Netflix Luke Cage, it's it's very well done. I mean, what, uh, like if you don't know that much about Luke Cage. Or like, or like the Marvel Universe. Don't worry, cause you don't have to like be a full on nerd. You have to be, you have to be my level nerd to go in and watch Luke Cage and know what's going on. And if you're just like randomly throwing Netflix and you see Luke Cage and it looks interesting and you want to get in it, that's perfectly understandable. And you'll perfectly like understand what's going on. Like by the first like ten minutes, you'll kind of get understanding what's going on, and you'll kind of like you won't like need all this backstory. It'll it'll tell you all the backstory. It'll tell you all I need to know to. Enjoy the show. It's really great. If you haven't, like, seen any of the other Marvel shows, like Daredevil or Jessica Jones, I highly recommend you do. They're great, fantastic shows. The actors are there are superb. The story writing, the acting, all of it is just superb. And Marvel just is, like, one of the best companies to to watch. I mean, they put so much effort and so much dedication to their shows and movies, and it shows, like, they care about what they're doing, and they're, they, they have not fucked up a show or a movie with a Marvel name on it. Well, I shouldn't say that, but MCU. Any movie or show related to the MCU, they haven't fucked it up. They, and that's, like, a really, really great thing, because I know that it's kind of, I know it could be kind of hard to, like, link all the shows together and link all moves together and make them all into one universe. It could be kind of hard, but they do it. They make it work, and that is what I love about the MCU. So, my final rating, definitely, Luke Cage is definitely a great show and a great, like, amazing show to watch. I'll definitely give it a 9 out of 10. I would give it a 10 out of 10, but there's, like, some scenes in there where, like, they could have, like, they could have expanded upon that a lot. They could have, like, they could have expanded upon it more. They could have added a little bit more references. They could have, you know, told you, you know, what happened to Jessica Jones. You know, if she is she concerned about Luke Cage? Because they were, they were lovers. They were, like, they were a thing in Jessica Jones. And Luke Cage is disappearing like that. I mean, yeah, Jessica, you no, know, not really as emotional as you think. But, you know, she, she cares. And it would be nice to hear, like, a voicemail or, like, some reference to, to like, Jessica Jones saying, you know, she wants to know what's Luke up to, you know, is he okay? Or any, and he could, like, ask her for help. Like, hey, Jessica, you know, I could use your help a little bit. What do you know about this? What do you know about that? But, yeah, that's that's why I think about Luke Cage. Let me know in the comment section of what you think about Luke Cage or what you think about the show or the MCU. And I believe the next 
um, MCU Netflix, Marvel Netflix show is gonna be either Iron Fist or season three of Daredevil. Because I don't think the Defenders are gonna be um, shown. I know this confirmed um, Defenders on 2017, but I don't think it's gonna be early 2017. Because the Defenders has Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Daredevil, and Iron Fist. They already established through the characters. They haven't established Iron Fist yet. And Iron Fist is going to be... I don't know how they're going to do it. Because me personally, I don't know that much about Iron Fist. And I actually kind of like want to look up and read more on Iron Fist to get like an idea of what, what to expect. Because I know it has to do with like Kung Fu and Chi and all that. But I really want to like read up more on it and like to know like okay, what I'm going to be expecting. What am I not going to see? Okay, what kind of Easter eggs am I going to find? What kind of like what kind of like references am I going to like try to look for? But I think that the way it goes, it's going to be Iron Fist is going to be next. And then possibly either Season 3 of Daredevil or Defenders. One of those two. So leave in the comment section, like, what do you want to see in Season 3 of Daredevil, Iron Fist, or Defenders? What ref what references have you found in the Luke Cage show? And what do you think about what Marvel is doing with Netflix? And what do you think about uh, Luke Cage on Netflix? So thank you all for watching and sticking to me and, like, listening to my, like, stupid rant of nerdiness. Thank you all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll definitely be talking more. When more Netflix Marvel shows come out, I'll be definitely, definitely be doing more videos on just me talking about it. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And just stay awesome, my Marvelites. Mar Marvelite. I've always wanted to say Marvelite. Because my friend called me a Marvelite. Because I love Marvel. And like, he said, oh, you're a Marvelite. I'm like, what is that supposed to be? Like, what is that supposed to be? He said, like, he said it meant like I'm like a Marvel citizen. Which I... Do not understand at all. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and stay awesome, everyone.